Hello and welcome. I am the Restless Kaiser and we are modeling for Advantage. Boom! So today we've got the West German uh, starter force, the Panzeraufklarungskompany or the Panzer Company, it's also known. I may struggle a little bit with the German words here. So according to the back of the box, what are we gonna get? We're gonna get three Leopard 2A5 tanks and two Leopard 2s. Different sprues then, we'll see that in a moment. Four Marder 2 Scouts, also usable as an infantry fighting vehicle. Three M109 155mm self-propelled guns. One M113 observation vehicle and two PAR helicopters, as well as two aircraft tornadoes. Or flight stands, eight magnets, a rule book, West German start here booklet, decal sheets, and unit cards. I'll have a quick cut here while I open this box privately like a pro. Obviously, if you're interested in getting hold of one of these, you can support our channel by buying one from us. Check out the link in the description. We've recently changed our pricing structure because we've got a little bit of a better deal with our suppliers. 15% off this beauty. Not bad. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through the bits of paper first, and as we go through the unit cards, we're going to look at the individual sprues of the vehicle. So to start with, you get one of these start here booklets with the paper section. I like these. They give you a basic starter army uh, list in there of what you can build out of here. It's good about this one. It is a 100-point list, and it is a legal list. I had a quick check. Sometimes, believe it or not, then the vehicle composition that they give you, it doesn't actually make a legal list. In this case, it definitely does. You also get basic assembly instructions and some of the key variants from which they provide the uh, unit cards for. Generally, there's more variants that you can make of many of these kits. And if you're interested in making those variants, check out their website, put in the, the sprue number and check the spotlight and it will take you to all of the different options you could build, different eras and things like that. Boom. Get yourself a little baggie which contains your Team Yankee manual, among other things. This is a A5 full colour version of the main rulebook. It's great that they include this in their starter armies. The cost of getting going in this game, you know, it's like 80 quid full retail. You don't want to pay another 30 quid for the rulebook. You don't need to. You probably got a few of these if you already play Team Yankee. Give them to your chums, give them to your bros. Say, guys, play this. Boom. All right, we get onto the unit cards, then you get one of these, which is your force composition card, and it tells you, as well as the mainline formations, only one of which you've got cards for in here, you also have all of your support options. Uh, you also get one of these nice bit of artwork on the back from the box art, and the basic movement orders. If you're new to the game, this kind of stuff is quite useful. Right, onto the cards themselves. So the HQ unit card, the formation that you're building, is a Panzer Alf Clarons company, which is from Panzer Lair Brigade number nine, the Leopard 2 headquarters. So the Leopard 2, for 11 or 17 points, you can have a Leopard 2 or a Leopard 2 A5. In this formation, it's a little bit unusual compared to some of the British and American ones we've seen. You have to take the headquarters company, single expensive tank. You have between one and two Leopard 2 or 2A5 companies. But you also have between two and four of these Marda 2 SPA troops, which are interesting because they're not anti-tank vehicles. They are recon vehicles, and we'll get to that. But they don't seem to have an ATGM built in. So... It's unusual to find in a, in a tank formation. You have to take quite a few of them. We'll come to that. You can also take a Fuchs Panzer Aufklärungszug or a Gepard Flak Panzer Battery. Yeah, I've got my managed to get my lips around all of those German words. It's a little bit confusing in this because I'm pretty sure in the World War II ones it just says Panzer Platoon, whereas in this it says Panzer Zug. They're using more of the German words here. So the Leopard 2 itself, or more importantly the Leopard 2A5, which is a brand new sprue for this, the Leopard 2A5. What does it look like? There's a picture. Boom! Um, it is 2020 sprue BM215. So these tanks get bigger and bigger as we go into the more modern tanks, We're getting closer and closer to the present day. Is this the turret sizes that really just keep growing? These things are enormous compared with World War II tanks. And it's a combination of ammo storage and a lot of extra electronic equipment, but also the ever increasing size of the main armament. The uh, This gun is the 120 millimeter L44 gun. It is a big, gone certainly can put these things next to world war ii tanks and um, 
the, just finished talking about the sprue, the detailing on the upper deck is really nice. The tracks and the running gear are all in a single piece. They do seem to be learning because there's, there's no sprue gates on the track. And sometimes where they, they've got the sprue gates, not only are they on the track, but they're on the front and you end up cutting into them a little bit. Here, this bit where the sprue gate is is going to be entirely concealed in, as part of the modeling process. I like that a lot. What I was thrown by this is there are two different guns on here i assume one of them there's there's a somewhat uh, an earlier or a different version or a short barrel version i'm not sure what that other gun is but it's interesting to see it here um overall i mean this looks like a 15 20 piece kit you've also got some skirts i like me a skirt on my tanks because it hides that my messy paint in and whatever mess i may have made of the assembly like most uh, Flames of War kits, Battlefront kits, there's key in to attach the tracks which are all in a single piece, tracks in the running gear, and the king is different on the opposite side of the lower hole, which means that you can't put them on the wrong way around. Beautiful. That's the sprue, but what's it like as a vehicle? The Leopard 285 has got 22 front armour, so it's right up there with those modern vehicles. It's got a skill rating of 2 plus on this HQ1. Uh, and it's got a courage of three plus with a remount three plus but morale of two plus she's got a 14 inch tactical move and that 120 millimeter gun is going to kick out fire at 40 inch range halted and moving rate of fire of two 22 anti-tank firepower of two up fan stabilizer laser range finder because it's a modern gun and it's hit on a four plus very nice, very nice indeed. You've got chopper mom, so you've got the side, the thermal imaging, the laser range finding the advanced step. All of these are common features to them on modern vehicles. So I'm not gonna bore you with the details of how they work. And it crosses on a two plus, cause it's a beast. Ain't no head you're gonna stop this thing from moving through it. I like that. 14 inch tactical move. And one of the issues with a lot of these newer tanks though, is they can't fight each other. This main gun has got an anti-tank rating of 22. This tank has got an armor rating of 22. You can't fight each other in the front, but with a 14 inch tactical move, that's okay because the side of that tank isn't far enough away. <laughs> you know, I, I, I wonder when we start playing with these ultra modern vehicles, whether we're gonna be sort of racing past each other on the table because we just can't fight frontally. Uh, which would be interesting. So that's the uh, the headquarters Leopard 2. Is there a noticeable difference between that and the platoon card while we're on the subject? Uh, the major difference is the, the company commander has got a skill of 2+, plus, whereas the skill rating is 1 lower on the Leopard 2A5. So the Leopard 2A5 come in 2, 3 or 4 uh, in the single platoon or Zug, uh, which are 34, 51 or 68 points. So 17 points a dude. You're not going to get many tanks in this formation. So that was the new Leopard 2, but looking at the, the Leopard 2A5, looking at the older Leopard 2, and there, there are many, many variants. I don't know what it goes up to, but I don't think 2A5 is the newest, um, but it's obviously a step change. The standard Leopard 2 is only gonna cost you 11 points of vehicle, so 2, 3, or 4, 22, 33, 44. The principal difference is it's got 18 frontal armor, rather than 22, but it's got the same gun. It's got the 40 inch, you know, the um, 120 millimeter L44 gun. It's exactly the same gun. So are you taking the two? I mean, you've got the near indestructibility of the 2A5, but you really pay for it. And in Team Yankee, the job is not to survive the battle. The job is to take the enemy position. I don't know, I don't know that the other one, because from the side, they're both trash. <laughs> so, you know, compared to the power of the weapons they're likely to come up against. So I think the Leopard 2 still might be a better choice. It's difficult to know without playing it. On the sprue, well, a lot of you will have seen this before. So again, you've got um, the tracks and running gear. And so the Leopard 2, standard Leopard 2 sprue, uh, has got that issue I'd mentioned to you about the screw, sprue gates coming in on the outside of the track. Um, you'd need to be paying super close attention to notice it, but when you cut this off and you clean it up, you do often damage the track pads, but it's tiny. You know, it's not, it's not a big deal. I just wish that they had, and I think they have, learn from it again you've got keying on the lower hull you've got a nice big upper deck that's well sculpted i don't actually know whether there's any significant difference between the lower hull i mean it's got different tools on on it some of the upper surfaces are slightly different all right there are differences but the turret 
is much smaller, still huge, and it's much more square. It's got a really distinctive um, uh, turret, the uh, the Leopard 2. Nice, That's Leopard 2. They do sometimes get criticized for putting like old stuff in the kit and mixed stuff. I can't imagine you would want to take a force exclusively the two way fives just because of the vast number of points they cost you probably do still need to include some of these uh, if you're going to try and feel the legal force that's got more than six models in it <laughs> so there's something in that i suppose those were the leopard twos the Marta two spar troop which is in here uh, sort of first glance i assumed that this was going to be some kind of atgm vehicle you get the the warrior milan you get the bradley uh two way uh, the Bradley A1 or something I forget what the name of the version is but ones with ATGMs on the outside or even if they're crew operated from infantry within but that's not what this vehicle is and as I say to take the, the Leopard 2 formation we have you need to take at least four models of these and they've just got the 35 millimeter auto cannon it's interesting they've got a front armor of six which is a lot for an APC they're still hit on four, skill rating of three. It's going to cost you only three points for a pair of them. But it's the gun. I don't, I don't know. I've not played enough Team Yankee. So this 35mm RH-503 gun, so it's some sort of chain gun. It's got a 28-inch range, hollowed and moving rate of fire of three, 11 anti-tank power, and four up firepower. So the thing with 11 anti-tank power is it isn't going to defeat any tanks, really, including T-55s from the front. But an 11 anti-tank power, let me just check, will that take out a Leopard 2A5 on the side? Well, no. Will it take out a Leopard 2 from the side? Very much so. Oh, actually, interestingly, I hadn't noticed the huge difference in the side armour between the Leopard 2 and the Leopard 2A5. The Leopard 2 has got side armour of 7, whereas the 2A5 is 13. That's a very big difference. And as just discussed here, there are a significant number of vehicles that are going to have the kind of weapons that can penetrate seven with a reasonable chance. But 13, they can't. It's just too far. That's that's frontal armor and crap tanks. 13. Um, but yeah, so what's this vehicle for? You've got two formations or two. I guess it probably is quite good at dealing with the T-55 horde. It probably is quite good at dealing with the BMP horde. With the front armour of six, it isn't instantly trashed by any weapons whatsoever because you get a dice on top of that. So maybe it does Maybe it does have a role. It's a really difficult one to know in advance without trying to play with it. Um, my, f my gut reaction to it was this is junk and you've got to take a lot of it. My second thoughts on this is I'd probably, at three points for a pair of them, I'd be tempted to max these guys out. Interestingly, there's also an option, replace all of them with the, from the 35mm to up to a 55mm for a single point. Now, single point feels like nothing, but it is increasing the cost of the unit by 35%. If you did that across your whole force, it's going to be significant, I guess. And that just pushes the anti-tank rating up to 13. And that's starting to look like a quite serious threat to a lot of things in the side. And this thing, 14-inch tactical move, it has the mobility. I'm interested in these. I don't know whether they're good. I don't know whether they're bad but they're a little bit different. They sit comfortably in the midfield, which is often not a good place in war games to be. You want to be heavy or you want to be light, whatever, but I'm interested. What's the sprue like though? Um, so this is the this is the Marta II. This is an um, infantry fighting vehicle, it, it, various different roles within the West German uh, force. It's another brand new sprue, so it's worth a little bit more consideration. It's got lovely uh, upper deck sculpt in. It's got the keying with the lower, the lower hole so you get the bits in the right place it's a big old turret for an apc you're looking at five maybe ten pieces including hatches here if there's a snag with it though and i've not built one yet so i'm not quite sure but like the bradleys and the warriors the way they've designed the sprue is you're going to attach these tracks have also got the side armor and the side structure of the vehicle built into them you're going to glue those to the side of the low hole and then you're going to fit this single piece upper deck which is literally just that top surface now in theory that works very well when you build a whole bunch of these in a rush like for a, for an infantry platoon or an infantry company or something you probably don't take the kind of care that you might need to and as you cut these off from the sprue gates they're not straight flat surfaces because they line up with these armor panels their sculpting is perfect but my 
cutting them from the sprue and flat scraping them out is imperfect and on a few occasions with the Warriors and the Bradleys I found myself like with pegs holding bits down and then when you squeeze it because you've got a bit of a lump then the back end pops out you know all of, all of that kind of stuff it's not a fault of the kit in that the kit is fine but you do need to be a lot more careful than you probably want to for a mass production vehicle if that makes sense and if they made different designs decisions because most of their other vehicles the upper hull is a fully sculpted piece that sits on the lower hull this slots into it quite in a quite a precise way so just a little bit a little bit care careful with that but otherwise, their other ones have been fine like that, just to let me care. Next piece to look at is the artillery, the uh, M109 self-propelled howitzer. This is used widely across NATO. Uh, it actually came, I think it first came to us in the US star kit. It's a 2019 sprue. Um, this this thing is a, is, a, is a beast. It's quite fat, it's quite short. The turret on it is huge and the gun is enormous it really is enormous interestingly there is another much shorter barrel length one i assume that this is for like a 1960s earlier version 70s version of something similar i'm not sure um but this comes with two different stat lines it's com it's constructed in a similar way to what i mentioned with the marda in that the skirts the side armor and the running gear is a panel that slots onto the lower hill hull and you've got this single flat piece of deck that slots on slides into place but the lines are much straighter there's less there's less movement in it it's much more flat so it's probably a little bit easier um, but remembering all of the things that i just said in relation to that stats of it though m109 you get two cards in here so you get the m109 and the m109 3ag ah 109g the silhouette is different right so the short barrel is for this one and the long barrel is for this one there we go both of these units come in three four five or six you get three in here if you've got the american box already another three if you want to get a second one of these pad out your forces i like it when they give you the right proportion that the second box is complete rather than over provides or under provides although these boxes are very expensive you probably don't want to ever buy more than one but i guess you could um, what's the difference between the A3G and the G then? The G is going to cost you 7 points for 3 guns and 14 points for 6 and straddles in between. Whereas the A3G is 8 to 16. In both cases you can take bomblets for an extra point. These things are hit on force but have a front armour of 2. Guy with a machine gun is a threat to these things. So keep them out of the way. That is an armour that's just metal to make you feel comfy right but the G has got um, in both cases they are artillery with an anti-tank power of four and a five power of two that's not necessarily the major difference the range is significantly improved on the a3g but you're going up from 88 inches to 112 inches like my table corner to corner isn't that big so that isn't the issue um the big difference is in the direct fire roll insofar as the g has got a fire an anti-tank power of 12 whereas the a3g has got a uh, direct fire anti-tank power of 15. 15 is pretty competitive. Would I would I say you should take these and put them on a hill and shoot at tanks? Definitely not, because they'll just die, and they're only ever going to take one shot. But if you've got six of these, you've only put 16 points into that. In the later game, when there's less vehicles, these can still fight anything in the side and many vehicles from the front. I don't think you should you should be encouraged to use them in that role given their armor rating of two but you could do it and for the extra point is it worth it hard to say hard to say probably not to be honest because that improvement is as far as i can see at my glance is only on the direct fire and you probably shouldn't be doing that but it's nice to have the option the vehicle that completely caught me off guard here is the M113. Uh, the M113 is a vehicle that was, you know, in service in a lot of armies for a lot of time. 
but I didn't realize it was still in service in the 90s in anybody's army. But but I guess in some of those support roles, it is. And in here, you've got a single point for a card to use it as an artillery observer. Um, I'm really, really glad they put this in the star kit because um, if the only way of getting an artillery observer for this these guns in this army is an M113. I really don't want to buy a platoon pack of these just to get one of them. Um, so that's nice. As a kit, it's very, very simple. We've got this we've got this upper deck, we've got the glasses plate, and we've got the two bits of track and the running gear on there. Interesting, perhaps because it's quite a fair bit older a design. I don't know whether it's even got the date on it, 2013. What is that? It's even got this internal compartment here. Uh, that's been partitioned. I don't know whether there's some variants where that may be exposed is perhaps why that is, but that's the kind of design feature you just don't see anymore. The inside of these models are structures to hold the model together, um, which is not what that is. But the second sprue, which they have com they have included in full, this is um, indicative of the older way they used to do things in that there's loads and loads of pieces on here. There's lots of different things you can make with it. I think we've got a recoilless rifle here. We've got two different types of mortars, many types of hatches, a mini gun, a couple of gun shields. I mean, this, this no doubt will make you 20 variants of the M113, for none of which are relevant to this card. Um, but if you had played sort of 1960s Vietnam, all of these things, quite interesting. I don't know when we're going to get round to uh, painting and deploying a West German force for Team Yankee, but I do know also that this is the thing that Johnny B wants, because he wants to make himself a Space Marine Rhino in 15 mil. Right, onto the aircraft that come in the box then. We get the PA helicopter. Uh, so this is a Hunter Killer helicopter, 8.16 points. Uh, it's hit on a four and an aircraft save of five. And you look at that and thinking, this is a pretty brittle platform to be paying four points to go for but it has the hunter killer rule uh, can be concealed by tall terrain within four inches can be gone to ground while moving so the great advantage of this aircraft is not its resilience or its ruggedness it is its stealth it's also got the uh, hot missile with a minimum range of eight and a maximum of 48 23 anti-tank power very solid. Yep, a lot of these modern vehicles have got chobber armor or some or explosive reactive armor. They've got a decent side armor. It's usually around about 15, 16. This kind of heat missile doesn't care. <laughs> it's way better than that side armor anyway. It's sprue then. I mean, I want to call it cute, but it's not really the right word. It's a really short, sort of stubby looking helicopter. But it's more like a fat toddler, isn't it? It's really bloated. It almost looks too big to support itself with these really thin rotors. Um, as design features, then there's nice sculpting on this. The doors are really quite crisp and deep, which is good on the smaller models. You need the detail to be strong for it to survive the painting process and to show up. The missile packs are in two halves, but comparing this to the Lynx kit, which is one of the other helicopter kits I built, or the um, in particular, is these runners that that it lands on, and I apologise that skids, skis runners, I don't know what they're called. On the Lynx, there's just a little dimple that they fit into, and every Lynx I have built, these skis, they're at a slightly different angle, because I don't quite know which one is right, whereas they've got sockets on this. So that's good, they're gonna go in and they're gonna go at the angle that they're supposed to go. Really like that, okay? Um, the sprue gates on these are also really nice and thin. It is a fragile looking things for the, for the rotors and so forth, but they have learned from the mistakes of some of their earlier kits and they've got much, much um, arguably weaker sprue gates. But to be honest, I'd rather the piece fell out in the box than the piece was damaged or broken by me cutting it off the sprue. Last vehicle in the set is the Tornado. The Tornado Strike Flight, the Luftwaffe. Two or four tornadoes for four or eight points. You're like, wow, that's pretty cheap, Sin. Well, aircraft are not that reliable in Team Yankee, is one of the things. I mean, these are largely just battlefield markers. You roll to see if they are, if you plop them down where they attack, you resolve defensive fire, they fire their weapons and then they're gone again. You don't even really need a marker, to be honest, from the way that they interact. But being hit on a four, 
and I've had an Aircraft Saver 5. This is pretty fragile. I have to say, a lot more fragile than I expect. I think that's a game design decision, so the interaction between ground and air matters. I think if it had a stronger aircraft sale and hit number that was more realistic, you just would never shoot at them. You'd never take a because it just doesn't really work. So what's so interesting about this particular tornado is the MW-1 submunition dispenser with KB-49 bomblets, KB-44 bomblets, a range of six inches, which is irrelevant because you just put it on the table exactly where you want it. He fires a salvo, and that's the super big artillery template with an anti-tank power of eight and a firepower of three. Eight against most top armors, cap out at two, and I believe bombs attack top armor. If that's the case, this thing goes through the top armor of most things, making it really powerful. But if you don't want to rely on that, you can take three shots with your the Mauser BK-27 autocannon. Three shots, uh, anti-tank power seven, and a five up uh, firepower. But that's also anti-helicopter. I wouldn't fancy being a helicopter, having a ground attack aircraft just strafing me with a cannon <laughs> as it went past. They don't have that kind of mobility. The kit then. Uh, pros out there will know this is a third party kit. I'm not sure who it is and what that means is it is a model kit not a war games kit So some of the pieces are really very very small and very fragile But and the detail is probably a little bit shallower is a bit more a bit more realistic rather than Hyper realistic recognizing how it will be painted, but to be fair there aren't too many pieces here There are a lot of pieces for what it is and for a war gaming kit For example the weapons pylons and the weapons would be a single piece Now this is just another glue point that you can mess up really um, it, You would provide only the weapons that were relevant necessarily for the particular version But it doesn't look too bad and I had a quick look at the instructions and it does look like you can actually sweep the wings from the way the kit is constructed um, whether it's just a choice of you have it in position A or position B uh, there is a pin here uh, so I think you might well be able to sweep the wings unfortunately it, when we want to get these things out quickly for release we don't have the capacity to test all of this stuff for you and I'm sorry about that um, but you know if you watch us on the channel you will find out in due course when we have got them all built um, and you get this other bit. Alright, so because these kits are made by third parties, sometimes they don't have the weapons that you would expect and they go battlefront often provide a bit of resin, a different missile, different weapons pod. In this case, there's this kind of bomb rack that sits on the underside of the exterior of the plane. Uh, it's been it's been you know, it's been molded with all of the sockets for all these different submunitions and so forth. But to be honest, the quality control on this is not great. This isn't a, this isn't a nice piece. Um, unless these things in the real world look really odd. It's like they've got neat rows and then just a kind of higgledy piggledy mess. Maybe they really do look like that. I don't know, but it doesn't it doesn't look right. It doesn't look great. But you're never gonna see it. At least it's there. You dry brush it up and you'll see something. Um, it's just a little bit disappointing from a quality control perspective, I think. It could be a lot better, but it isn't very important. I'll try not to rustle up. They come in especially noisy bags, these flight stands. Um, the flight stand kits that you get from Battlefront, uh, you see them in a lot of their, their helicopters, their aircraft. You get two different lengths of stand, which is nice. It just slots in there. It's clear. It does the job. It's socketed to take a magnet, and they do provide you with the eight magnets in here for the helicopter, which is nice to rotors and the helicopter itself right? um, fit into these. But again, with the Tornado, because it's a third party kit, it was never designed to interact with these flight stands. So what you have is these, these pegs that go into the into the lower part and you're basically going to have this bit of clear plastic stuck to the bottom of the plane which your flight stand is going to slot into but it's not it's not bad it's not bad because you're not you're not looking there and it's you know it's it when you look at it separate you've got this bit of flight stand sticking out but it isn't separate on the table, is it? It's plugged into the flight stand, which is there anyway. So it isn't actually, when you're building it, you're thinking, oh, that doesn't look great. But when you're actually using it, it it's there's already a flight stand in that place. It doesn't really matter. You don't notice it. They're all right. And you don't need to build it. Once you've got a fair few of these, you know, you've got enough. That's just another thing that you don't need so many of. You can reuse the magnets for other things and so forth. Always nice that they include them. 
With the paper bits, I forgot the decals. There are three decal sheets here, uh, small, medium, and large. Uh, you've got this kind of main West German one with all those German crosses on. And then you've got these two dinky, winky, teeny, weeny ones for the different aircraft. Um, and these really small with little West German flags on. Um, decals increasingly important in these starter sets because you don't get them in the starter kits elsewhere. Um, not the starter kits, in the platoon boxes. They don't seem to be providing decal sheets or indeed necessarily unit cards with a lot of their stuff now. So again, getting all of that stuff in this set, really nice. So overall, what do I think? I, I, I'm struggling to gush about this one. I think it is a good starter set. I think if you want to play West Germans, you probably do want all the things in here. I think they've done a fairly good job of providing you a force that's different to a lot of the others, especially with those Marder 2s. Um, and a lot of the content in here is new stuff or stuff that complements well. But of the 17 vehicles, four of them are aircraft. Four of them are light vehicle killers. One of them's an observer. Three of them are artillery. There's only five tanks in here. A lot of your combat power is tied up in these five tanks. And for comparison purposes, because this is still 80 quid full retail, and it's, it's a decent box and it's a decent amount of plastic. But if you were to look at the some of the British Armour Battle Group or something like that, it's got like 22 vehicles in it. I know these are bigger, but in terms of the play experience, the number of models and the number of units, that, that's how it is. Like all of the Team Yankee sets, because they're in transition with their infantry at the moment, again, they don't include infantry. I think there's two reasons. I think when you learn in the game, you don't want infantry. They really changed the pace of the game, and they had a whole lot of rules around assaults and so forth that are very important, but you can have a perfectly enjoyable game driving some tanks around and blowing each other up. The aircraft rules are massively simpler than the infantry and vehicle interactions, for example. But the, but the lack of infantry in these sets does feel that they lack for a completeness um, and, the, and the relatively low tank presence in this set and the relatively high aircraft presence for the total number of vehicles and artillery. I don't know. I don't know. I guess it should have had... I'd have swapped the tornadoes for some more, you know... Do you know what I mean? I, I feel it needs a bit, more, a bit more staying power on the ground. But, you know, time will tell. We'll have a look. Look, it's not bad. It's just not great, that's all. And that's okay, not every product can be amazing. And I don't want to stand here and tell you that I think it is amazing, when I don't. I think it's good. I still bought it, right? Anyway, that's enough from me. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>